Hello, I'm Matt Frost, I've got a quick tips video for you here, and I'm just going to get straight into it because there are always any time. So the first tip I've got for you here is when you're claiming things on your insurance. So let's say, for example, I go to therapist here. I've got some insurance. I've not got enough inventory space here because I've organized my inventory really badly for this video specifically so I can do this. So you can do the old alt-click trick to equip things. So normally when you're inventory, if you alt-click something, it will put it on your character. Alt-click, 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 alt -click. Can't do it for items, but anything you can equip, like clothing, or you know, armor or guns, you can do. And if I just show you, boom, it's on the character. It's a really useful way of if you're really low on space, or if there's something from your insurance that you know you're going to want to equip, then you can just go straight into here, click on it, hold Alt, tap on it, and you'll be able to put it straight onto your character. Just to show you as well, it does work with guns. Let's see if I've got an insurance claim with a gun in it. Okay, so the TT, I mean, it's not what I wanted. <laughs> Lost an M4 here, obviously, because there's an M4 mag there, but anything that's, you know, equipable, you can equip straight onto your character. The only problem with it is, I've made a mistake here because I've equipped a smaller bag when I could have equipped that tries it, which has wasted me some space, but, you know, pretty much that's the idea of it. You can alt-click on things when they're in the insurance menu, and then we'll equip straight onto your character. Okay, so quick number two is for basically some gameplay tips this time, or I guess settings tips. On my videos, I've got wide view from left to right. A lot of people I see watching on YouTube videos, they don't have this setting here, FOV, turn all the way up to max. If we just turn it down, just to show you, this is what the game normally looks like. So if I put myself somewhere where I can see things on the edge of the screen easily. So let's go here. Right, so looking straight forward at the red truck, I can just about see that truck in the, on the left corner of my eye, and I can see three red stripes and well, four red stripes to the right on the fence. Now if we go into the settings and change FOV up to max, we can now see way, way more of that fence on the right side of the screen. You know, I'm not gonna count them, there's like 10 stripes there or so. And we can see the whole of the truck on the left side of the screen. Personally, I prefer the game like this. Some people don't like it because it means you're zoomed out, so you don't get to see things in the distance as closely. So just show you that truck's quite small there. But if we turn the FOV back down, it's bigger. But it's, it's really up to you which you prefer. Personally, I do think that having a higher FOV gives you a better view of the game. Really, I, I do think that having a low FOV is going to give you a disadvantage on target. Let's see if we can get him with a grenade. Nope, he did not die to it. This is not going to end well, I'm pretty sure. Huh. That went better than I expected. Okay, now the next tip I've got for you here is actually in the graphics menu. It's less of a tip and more of a customization option I would recommend turning on. Now, my settings here aren't what they normally are, but I normally have textures on high, shadows on low, LOD on 2, uh, which is apparently the best one for performance and doesn't impact the image that badly. Overall visibility is 2000, which is the default. Shadow visibility is 2000, uh, sorry, 1100, which is the default. SSAO you want off, contact SSAO you want off, screen space reflections you want off, and anisotropic filtering you want on per texture or on. Now at the bottom as well, I would recommend turning off noise and Z-Blow, which will just clear up the screen a little bit, and maybe chromatic aberrations if you want. That sort of makes the image a bit a bit tighter, a bit cleaner. Now as you can see here, the game doesn't look awful. The main thing you're gonna notice when I actually show some proper gameplay is gonna be the shadows. But one thing you do wanna make sure you definitely turn off is the SSAO settings. They will make basically dark things not as dark. So the game doesn't look as pretty with SSAO turned off, but it will mean that if there's somebody hiding in the dark, hiding in the grass, hiding by something like these ledges here, for example, they won't have a shadow around them, whereas they may have done normally with SSAO in the evening. Now, turning off that shadow, it's not going to really give you much of an advantage, an unfair advantage, but it just means that people won't sort of blend into shadows as much as they would do with that setting turned on. For example, those shadows there, or those shadows there. Someone would stand out a lot more there with the SSAO turned off than they would have done with SSAO turned on. The gun itself as well will not have as detailed shadows on it, and the, the flickering shadows you can see here now aren't due to that being turned off there from the shadows being on low. So if you do not like that flickering that you can see on the gun, maybe put shadows on medium or high, but I put them on low just because it seems to be what the, the best thing to do. You know, a lot of YouTubers and streamers do it, but you do get these horrible jaggedy shadows as you can see here on my screen now, which can be a little bit distracting. Okay, now to be fair, some of these haven't really been very good tips. A lot of them have been just changing settings and, and letting you know about things that exist in the game. But one thing I would like to also mention to you... Let's just go somewhere. There it is. Oh, I want to I talk about things. I don't want to die. One thing I also want to mention to you is that you can delete things from the inventory really quickly. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment once I get to some safety. 
behind this tree, maybe? Yeah, this tree will do. I'm only in offline mode anyway. If you want to get rid of something out of your inventory really quickly without having to right click and discard and everything. So say you pick up a backpack that's full of stuff you don't want. You just tap delete on it. Tapping to put your mouse over something and tapping delete will drop it. Even your container, which you don't want to drop. But you can drop anything onto the floor just by tapping delete on it. It's a really quick way of doing it, especially if you're clearing out a bag, as I said earlier. But it's, you know, it's just better, the better way of doing it. Because you can't move while doing it, or you can't run away quickly by doing it. Because you've got to take your hand off WSD and move it over to the delete key on the other side of your keyboard. That's the only major disadvantage of it. But it's way quicker than right clicking on everything and tapping, you know, remove or whatever it is. Uh, discard. So that's one quick tip for you. I realize some of these haven't really been quick tips. They've been more how to do basic things in the game, but a lot of these things the game doesn't ever tell you, or the game doesn't really ever let you know that you can do. So it's, you know, some people may find them really useful. Okay, so this final tip I've got for you here isn't really a tip, it is more just a piece of advice. If you are playing the game and you're playing a map, I mean it seems to be worse on Shoreline, if you're playing Shoreline or any other map and you're having really bad lag spikes and you don't normally have them, sounds really simple, but restart the game. Uh, I play Shoreline every now and then, and whenever I do, I have problems with lag. If I've played the other map while Tarko has been running, if I close the game, which lets the game clear out the maps that it has loaded, load it up again, and then go into Shoreline, I don't have the same lag problems I was having before. I think it's basically that the game is caching the maps; it's keeping them loaded, even if you've not on the, if you need you're not ugh, even if you are not on them anymore. So by closing the game and reopening it again, it gets rid of all those maps that it's saved and it only loads up the one that you want. I do find though that Shoreline does run dramatically worse than the other maps and I'm not really too sure why that is. Uh, the game does really need 16 gigs of RAM, which is how much I've got, but I've heard people have better results when they've got more than 16 gigs of RAM. So if you've got anything below 16, you are probably going to struggle with the game, but the best option for you in that case is probably to restart your game between map changes if you've only got 8 gigs of RAM and hopefully that would give you better performance because it does seem like the game keeps a map in its memory until you restart the game and obviously if you've got too many maps loaded in your memory the game will run out of space the game will crash or the game will run laggily those are the you know that's what's going to happen so the last one wasn't really a tip but it's just a bit of advice uh, if you did enjoy the video please do leave a like down below or a comment or whatever uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel please do i really do appreciate it and if you're looking for some friends or people to play discord with people to play discord people to play tarkov with i have a discord which will be linked down in the description below thank you for watching this video Bye-bye.